Hello guys. Um, in this video we have a very interesting and fascinating topic to talk about which is fault tolerant proxy server or simply we know it by load balancing. If you are a computer science student or you are an IT administrator or you have any kind of business or website and you need high availability and scalability for your uh, system make sure you watch this video at the till the end of that and you will be amazed how easy it is with some simple steps to provide high availability and also scalability to the system let's get started uh, we are going to study load balancing at the very beginning, we have a short introduction to give you the concept and why we need load balancing. And the next step, we're going to do the actual configuration and encoding. So make sure to put your hands in work and uh, do the configuration part of it. The main objective is to avoid any single point of failure in our system. We don't want any machine or any part of the system to be so important that if it goes down, all the system goes down. We don't want something like that. So this is a very typical architecture that we have uh, in our uh, system. If we have a small business, the user use internet to connect to the web server and then get the information of the service needed. But the problem here is if anything happens to this server, any small kind of uh, hardware or software problem or simply you for maintenance reason you want to bring it down and do some update or anything in this case the user will be denied from getting access to the to the service only because you want to bring some small change here and or the other case is if you right now you have like 10 user and then you start growing and expanding and you you reach thousands of user then your web server cannot handle that many requests. So what you want to do is you want to do this. In the state of one server, you have two web servers and they are exact identical servers. They provide the same kind of service and you have a load balancer in front of that. So user access the load balancer and the load balancer decides which web server is up and then it sends the client request to that. So in this architecture, if you have 1,000 user, two servers is enough. If you have 1 million user, then the two server is not enough. So you will start adding more servers, two, 10,000 of them, to provide fast service to the user. But what's the problem of this architecture is here. Here is a bottleneck. It's a single point of failure again. If anything happens to the load balancer because of any small issue, the entire system is inaccessible beca only because something happened to load balancer. To avoid this, we go to this architecture. Here you see we have two load balancer. So the client access the same IP address or maybe the name uh, www.example.com and then the request goes to one of the load balancer and the load balancer uh, has a list of available backend servers and then sends the client request to one of them and then the server can provide the service to the client. In this architecture, if one of the load balancer goes down because of any reason or you just want to bring it down to update it or change it or maintain it because of any reason, the other provide the service. Same case for the backend. If multiple of them uh, face an issue as far as one of them is up the client get access without feeling anything about it so that's the architecture we want to uh, uh, work but not in this video why in this video i don't show you this because it is a, a bit of uh, it has a bit of complication and also for this at least i need six machines that i don't have right now i'm, I'm working on a lab on on this architecture in the next video, I'm going to show you uh, how to implement this architecture. But for the time being, we are using this. One load balancer and two machines. These two machines can be tens of them. We don't care. We just need to implement the load balancer. And then, if you learn this part, it's easy to jump to this stage. So we are, doing to, we are going to do the coding and, co and configuration part of uh, this architecture. 
For this, we use HAProxy. In load balancer, we need a software, right? And we use HAProxy. HAProxy, which stands for High Availability Proxy, is very fast and reliable. And also, it is free open source software, so you can get it for, for free. And it is developed by C, that's why it's very fast and efficient. And a lot of huge websites like GitHub, like Twitter, like a Stack Overflow, are using HAProxy for their load balancing. So you can be sure that it is a very uh, fast and reliable implementation. And you will be amazed how easy it is to configure it. So today we're going to do this. We have a load balancer, which HAProxy installed, and two backend servers, client access load balancer, which is front end, and then get access to one of backend servers. Uh, I have Ubuntu installed in these machines, but for you, the backend servers can be anything. It can be Windows operating system with, with, with IIS installed on that. But here, for HAProxy, you, know, you need to have an open source version of operating system because HAProxy itself is open source, so it is working only on virtual software. So let's go ahead and implement it. Here, you see in my machine, I have three virtual machines installed, VM1, VM2, and load balancer. VM1 and 2 are just two simple web servers that in my case, they just provide a simple, simple uh, web page. So nothing else, just a simple web page. And then the load balancer is the one who you want to get access to, who you want to hit with a request, and then load balancer sends your request to one of the machines. How? I can show you here. I have the server 1, which IP 133, which has only one simple web page. It says on server 1, and the server 2, server 2, IP 1, 133, and it just shows a simple message on, on server 2. And we have 134. 134 is the load balancer. As you see, it, it doesn't show anything right now. But we want. what's our goal is to hit this IP address, 134, and get access to server 1 or server 2. OK? So right now, we have only two servers. It can be tens of them. But we want to hit this IP address and then get access to one of them. So let's go ahead and work it. Uh, let me show you the one of the web servers. I'm going to uh, open VM1. Sorry. Here you see uh, in the VM1, the only thing you should do is to install Apache. If you are working with Linux, you have to have Apache installed. If you are working with Windows, you only have to have IIS with a simple web page installed. So the only thing you need to do is sudo. sudo for Windows users means uh, administrator, running run as administrator, and then apt get installed. If you are not familiar with Linux, uh, if you have any cell phone, you have a uh, app store in your cell phone, right? Where you go and download the applications. For Linux, we have the same concept. There is a software storage where you can go and install the softwares. So this is a common to do that, and then Apache 2. You can download Apache 2 from internet also and install it, but this is the easy way to do that. When you run this and enter your password, you, you will get Apache 2 installed. I already have it, so I'm not going to do it again, but as soon as you install Apache, that's all you need. Uh, Apache has a simple HTML page. Uh, it is here in the... Uh, where dab, 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 HTML and index.html is here. So when you install it, you will you will see a, a big uh, a, a HTML page with lots of code, HTML code. But I simplified it, so it just just it just shows the server too. You don't need to do that, but if you want to um, have a simplif simplification, you can do that. Okay. So do this in install Apache for uh, 
VM1 and VM2, and you're good to go. So let's come to load balancer. Here is all we have to do. I'm gonna go ahead and um, log into this. So let me clear everything. So right now we don't have anything installed in this machine. The only thing that we have is the Ubuntu version of Linux. So what you have to do is install the HFROXY. The way to do in Ubuntu is sudo, means run as administrator, and then apt get install go to app store or software storage and install what? HFROXY. And I said that's why it means don't ask, ask me again to install it or no. It takes only a few minutes to install it, okay? That's an assault. Uh, to test it, you, you can say service HAProxy status. See, you don't get anything. Means HAProxy is not running. Why? Because HAProxy by default is disabled. You have to go out and install it. So sudo run as administrator, nano, which is a command to edit a file, etc default HAProxy. Awesome. So you see enable is zero means it's disabled now. So one enable, save, exit. That's it. So go run the comment again. See HAProxy is not running. So we, you have to run the HAProxy, but before that you want you want to configure it, right? So to do the configuration, the only thing you have to do for HAProxy is to introduce the front and back end servers. Front end is the load balancer, and the back end is the uh, back end web servers. So let's go ahead and do that. sudo run as administrator nano edit the file. Which file? etc uh, hfproxy and hfproxy.cfg. Here is the path where the configuration file for the hfproxy is. These are the default configuration. Uh, based on your uh, uh, system policy or organization policy do you have, uh, you have to change these configurations, but for our example, we don't need to change anything because it's just a short introduction. So first thing you have to do is to, to introduce your front end, front end, keyword front end, and then put any name you want, it's optional. So I put hproxy in, means input uh, point for the user. And then it's an optional name, you can put anything. Then tab, make sure you don't put a space, just a tab, and then bind to port 80. Put bind to all requests, all IPs from port 80. And then default backend, this is the keyword, default backend, and then put a, or any name, arbitrary name, whatever name you want to put. I will say HFROXY HTTP. You can put any name here. So our backend is HF, HFROXY HTTP. So let's configure the backend now. Backend HFROXY HTTP, the name that we just uh, introduced there. And then you have to say the balancing algorithm. I say RAM Robin. Uh, we have uh, multiple uh, algorithms to distribute the workload across the servers. So the easiest, the simplest one is the round robin, which uh, sends the request to backend servers in turn, one to each of them. Uh, but there are many other algorithms that you have to uh, go and read about it. And based on your requirement, you have to pick up the one that you need. And then the mood is HTTP. Then you have to introduce your servers. Server, keyboard, and VM1. You remember we have our, our servers here. VM1 and VM2, we want to introduce these two. The name here is optional. I'm putting the VM1 to, to be the same name as the uh, machine name. Then the IP address. The IP address of one of them was 121, 129, and actually it is 131. And the port number is 80, and then check. The check means do the health check. Before sending any client request to them, make sure that it's up and running. There are several 
approach to do that, but I'm using the simplest one. The load balancer sends a, a simple uh, TCP request to the server and make sure the server is listening to that. The second server is Virtual Machine 2 with IP 16.121.133, listening to port 80 and do check. That is all you have to do. And then save it and exit. So now you're ready to test your HA proxy. Uh, go ahead and say service HA proxy and then reload. Awesome, see, HA proxy is running now. To make sure that it is running, say status and make sure HA proxy is running. As soon as you do that, you are good to go. See, with the port 24, we couldn't access anything before that, but now, boom, server two. So I'm the client now. Uh, you can curl it. You, if, you know, if you don't know what a curl means is, uh, curl is a way to, to test a web page if you want to test that it is up or no. So we want to test the, the IP, right? This 172, 160, 121, 134, which is uh, this guy here in our, in our system is this load balancer. I want to access the load balancer and as soon as I do that, see server one, you see server one, and then again, the same IP, but server two. See, server two. Again, server one, again, server two. So I have one IP, but through that, I get access to backend servers. If I have thousands of them, I can access to them with one uh, IP address. Just refresh here, see, server one. That was all we had to do to implement this this uh, architecture so you see we have two two web servers with two different ips and we have one load balancer we access the load balancer and we get access to one of the web servers so after this anytime you open any website like a stack overflow remember this time you get this web page from one server and the next time you are accessing the Stack Overflow, you may, you may get the same web page, but from different server. So it is based on the algorithm that they are using. But that's what happening at the backend. And that's why you scale your, your system. If, you have, if your number of users starts growing, you can add multiple web servers and keep the same IP address and the same name. Okay, so this was all for this video. Um, you remember the, the only thing we, we had to do is to install HA proxy for load balancer and Apache for the two machines that we have. These two can be anything, like it can be a Windows operating system with IIS installed, but the load balancer, it, you have to have a open source uh, operating system and you have to do HA proxy and then configure it. Uh, the next video we are going to talk about this how to have this which is a very strong and uh, fault tolerant uh, architecture which if one HA proxy uh, face any issue the other can uh, still provide the same service for the user so uh, stay tuned for the next uh, video of me thank you for watching this one